Welcome back for mobility. It is day nine. Day, day nine. nine. And we're gonna get you moving. So this is our second mobility class? Second mobility. Yeah. Mobility. We've so had good feedback on the mobility, so I'm glad you guys are enjoying them. Yeah, you it's a nice break. Crazy. Yeah, all shouldn't crazy. really be a break, I guess, but it's it's I guess it's, a change. It's foundational. It's not a break. Yeah, maybe we maybe we we, we think about that. It's not a break. It's niche. foundational. It sets the stage for proper proper strength training and proper cardio training. But we're gonna give you a little bit more details on range of motion, which is also important in our How It's Done 101. All right, right. To so today we're talking about range of motion. So to, <laughs> sorry, to uh, move effectively, you must have both passive and active range of motion as well as stability. So passive range of motion, I'm gonna give you an example. I'm gonna get down on the floor. Yeah, get yeah. down on the floor. And I'll come down with you. So passive range of motion actually, yeah, is accessed when there is force added. So it's not your joint doing the work alone or moving your body alone, it's actually when there's force added. So notice I am making Tammy move at her hip joint and that is passive because she's being passive as the force is driving it. I'm in a sack of potatoes. No, you're much lighter. <laughs> I'm in a sack of potatoes. Uh, an a active range of motion is when she's actively, so the joint is being accessed and, act and actively moving on its own. All right, so to have, when you don't have um, an active and passive range of motion, that is within the same five to 15% range. Five to 15% um, difference between the passive and active is normal. Anything so beyond that? You're so I know. focused. There's She's a lot to remember all here. Brain. All the brain today, so I'm just smiling. <laughs> all um, the brain. Anything beyond that often leads to injuries. So it's important to train both of these. Now, pa active, you're always doing it when you're moving your body around. And then passive is when we like resistance train, we're, uh, we're teaching our body to add on load so that we're not at our maximum capacity in active range of motion when we're moving around. So we wanna be able to like throw a ball, so add force when you're in a certain position. We don't wanna just move in that position and add no force to it. We wanna train our body to also add the force. Um, another good example of passive will be like when you're at the gym and you're using machines. When range of one direction, perhaps the pull or the push, depending on whatever piece of equipment you're on, they might be a little bit more passive. And then when you use your body to pull back against that machine, that's when you come into the active. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 That's how it's done one, on today's 101. Okay. So we have mobility today and we are going to introduce into our mobility, something we haven't done in mobility before, the challenge Mm -hmm. So we're so excited. excited. We're so excited. So excited. So the good news is, if you're there with a partner or working out with your hubby or whoever, you only need one of the bars for this uh, mobility day. So you can actually share the bars. So that's an awesome part. You don't Bonus. always need to use two. We're treating it a bit like a ballet bar in some instances, and then other times to support. All right, guys. So we're gonna grab our bars and we're gonna get into it. As we do a mobility day, it's one minute of movement. We might switch from right to left side, but that's all you're gonna need. One yeah. challenger bar. Your bar. So go get that pretty go thing. Go get that bar. I want the white one. I'm taking the white one too. Oh, you take the black one. No, I'm supposed to take the white one. I was told. <laughs> all right? Okay. All right, so we're gonna start off small as we do. We're gonna get some ankle mobility in. So we're just gonna use this as support. So like I mentioned, kind of a ballet bar. Now one mo minute, moving from heel to toe. Really think about range of motion. How far to the top can you go? So as we age, that flexion throughout our ankle tends to decrease. We talked about this a little bit, I feel, in the last couple of weeks. And depending on the types of shoes you wear, depending on um, whether you climb stairs or not, we tend to really lose that flexion through the ankle. Even though it's just your ankle, it hinders everything. Okay, from the bottom up, 
We have to be strong. Everything needs to be supported. There needs to be a full range of motion in order to be able to move fluidly. Yeah, so look at what shoes you guys are wearing, all right? If you can walk around, my advice to you, if you can walk around the house in bare feet or in sock feet, this is when you can train this mobility. Like if really pushing into the balls Woo. of your feet. And yes, my toes are dead this time. Last one. Just you're wondering. All right, now we're gonna go into a plie squat. Gonna be supported again by the challenger bar. You can have it like Tammy has it or you can have it like I do. Toes pointed out and you're gonna come down, drawing those hips back. So if you need more support, you can have both hands on the bar as she does. So we're sending our knees out to the side. Try to keep your heels nice and heavy on the ground. And this is probably the only time that we'll say the knees are okay or permitted to go beyond the toes, either here or in the sissy squat. But otherwise, no. No if you problem. don't have mobility. What is happening? What is happening? Their knees are going out. It is okay for today. Our heels are on the ground, but yours don't have to be. If you can't, if you don't have that range of motion. So work it out. Either come down further and don't have your heels on the ground, or you can come up and get that more range of motion in the sit. All right. All right. Hamstring stretch. So I love this one. So the back line. Everyone has a tight back line. Not everyone, some people have a front tight line. But for those of you that do, you're really gonna love this. So you wanna bring your ankle up onto the challenger bar, and then you're gonna rotate to that outside edge. Just stay here for 30 seconds. Another three, two, one, and we're gonna switch legs. So come up. Yeah, we're not staying still. We're not holding this for longer than two seconds. A two count. Another 12 seconds here. Woo. You want to make sure you're really planting through that supporting leg. The entire foot's on the ground. Think of almost curling your toes into your carpet or into your hardwood, rooting down through the heel ball and the hardwood. Okay? All right, now we're going to go do those adductors in here. We're going to do low, low lat lateral lunges. We're gonna have that bar out to the front. Even come so low that this heel comes up and then come back to center. So Drive that knee out to side. A lot more range of motion than we get in our typical lunges. We're really trying to lengthen that medial line. And when you're here, pull away from that heel. So you can increase the stretch once you've come down in it and kind of pull. You'll feel a stretch through here. All our ligaments and joints are like giant elastic bands that crisscross and run through our body. So if you're deep in the stretch here and you still have range of motion, by flexing the ankle, you'll shorten that muscle, sorry, lengthen that muscle on the back further, create a deeper stretch, okay? Everything is tied in one to the other. That's why we need to have a total body regime that really works our entire body from top to bottom. All right, gate openers. We've done these lots, I feel like, in our warm-ups. We're gonna start with the bar on the left side because we're gonna work out that right gate. So like we said, it doesn't have to be high. You wanna feel comfortable in this and you wanna feel like you're kind of, yeah, mobilizing, good word, mobilizing. We're gonna stay on this side, but in three seconds, we're gonna switch directions. Even if you have to put weight on that bar, don't worry about it. We're trying to mobilize that hip, so it's okay. Because if you need the stabilization, then you need the stabilization to get this work done. Whew, that feels good. There it is again, that feels good. It did feel good though. So if you feel a pinch, if you're coming too high, just lay off a little bit. Don't go as high, okay? We don't want any pain here. Sometimes 
that feel good? We're, we're going back to tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <Into> yesterday. <laughs> we're going back to yesterday. Wow. Um, sometimes the, that feel good feels good. When Switch you directions. Movement comes from a place where your body's not used to moving in a certain way. Like how often are we opening up laterally? Are we get a medial rotation? Whether it's internal or external, really only when we get in and out of the car. But it feels so good to like focus on that. Ten more seconds here. Push down to that supporting leg. Three, three, two, two and one. one. All right, we're gonna move the bar again to that left side because we're gonna start on the right side. We're gonna do a narrow squat to a reach over. So it looks like this. Now everyone's range of motion in the narrow squat, so you want your feet to come in a little bit in from shoulders. And then as you come up, you're gonna reach with that right side and you should be able to get more of a stretch in holding that bar. So we're gonna stay on this side. So your feet are about hip distance apart, okay? Or closer. Hip distance apart is actually neutral. If you can get closer, if you have that range of motion to get them a little bit closer or even touching your ankles together, you can do so as well. And then I want you to think about reaching up and over that challenger rather than think of compressing through the left side rib cage. Think of fanning the right rib cage wide open. Five seconds. Five. Now this is mobility today, guys, so don't worry about how many squats you're getting in. I want you to really try and get down. Since today we also have this stabilizer here, I want you to really think about how far you can get down. Now's your chance to work into the depth of that squat. Okay, so We're sit here if you need to. Having a helping hand from a friend, right? Totally. I like the kickstand. And that rib cage open, pin it, pin it. There's lots of fancy things that you've probably seen with these bars, lots of body weight stuff, but we wanted to show you that they can really help in the development of your stability and mobility as well. Yeah, we don't have to necessarily be gymnasts to use them. Another seven seconds. Get over, reach, 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 reach. Whew. All right, front line. So we're gonna put it out in front, both of us. You're gonna step back and you're gonna, you're gonna have to move around in this because you wanna know how far away from the bars you need to be. We're gonna pull those hips back. I'm opening up, so I'm falling. I like to say it feels like you're falling through the armpits. But you wanna kind of fall down in a way and then you're gonna come bringing the hips to the bar. Really extending through that chest. Bracing yeah, in the neutral shoulders. Spine. Neutral spine, active arms. Try to keep the shoulders rolled back. And as we drop forward to that chest extension, you might just feel that entire front line stretch. You might feel your core from yesterday stretch out. And then you might get that very first sensation of, oh, that feels so good. And make sure not to depress your shoulders in that one. So you don't want your shoulders up around your ears for that one. All right, now we're gonna bring it to the back. We're gonna stand in front of it. So I like to have my heels, just so my butt doesn't knock it over, right in front of the knobs there. And then we're gonna make a T with our arms and we're gonna touch down to this side. So right hand to left what? and back up. My heels are on the of the challenger bars and then actively pushing it over it, okay? Still working the same muscle groups. I'm just creating a little bit more internal pressure, diaphragmatic pressure. As we exhale, rotate, and then reach down. We want to keep that back nice and flat. We're not at all curving through the spine. No turtle shells here. Yeah. All right, the next guy. Okay, guys, this might be difficult for some of you, so we're gonna give you options. It's called an over-under. So we're gonna work on our step over, and then we're gonna try and come down into that deep squat and go under, okay? 
so this is a super functional movement. What I'm doing but is the alternative. I'm going to stay low, back my ass up, go all the way around it like a little duck, and then go up and over. So we're going to need to switch directions. So I'm going to walk around. So just stay nice and low. Tammy's at a level. Either if you're just a bigger person and you can't fit through, that's fine. You got more junk in the trunk. But I she's also she working more. on the depth of her squat, so maybe one day she can get under there. I know you can, but I can just get saying. under my yeah. back. Take it with me. Like a little house, a house on the back of me. All right, now <laughs> we're gonna drop the bars. We're gonna come into a tripod plank, meaning. Three limbs, so hands angle here. gripping the top of that bar, or the bottom of the bar, I should say. And notice my right foot is off the ground here. I'm gonna bring it through, so weave it through, and then drop that hip down. This feels amazing. So as I come back, I'm gonna stay in that tripod, okay? Try not to compress through the shoulders. We're gonna switch sides, so lift that left leg, kick it through, nice and controlled. Our hands are below our shoulders here. Whew. Okay. We're almost there. Last one. All right. Nice. So that's a little bit tough on the shoulders, so you want to make sure that you push through those palms. All right, next one. We're going to go into a V sit. So coming onto those sit bones. We're going to grip that. Are you gripping it under or over? I'm gripping it from the Right outside. at the outside. So we're going to weave our feet up, up and over, and then under. Scoop. We're like balance on those sit bones. Nice and low. And if you can't elevate it, you can also set the base of the challenger down on the ground. And let's take the legs over and let's take the legs under. We're here for you, wherever you are, OK? Woo. 15 seconds, you're gonna feel this in the shoulders because you're lifting it. Eight seconds. Get that little crunch in so you can get the feet up and over Three, and under. Two, and take it down. Woo. That, that is mobility. What was that? <laughs> I like you. A minute, a minute. All right, now we're gonna do a figure four. So glute bridge. So stay down. We're going to lie on the back. I want you to put your right foot up on the bar. So right at the back of your ankle. And then you might want to back up a little bit. Notice her figure four here. So she's crossing the ankle over, keeping that knee nice and wide and coming up into that glute bridge. We've done these before, just not as high. Of course, if you can't do it on the bar, just do it on the ground. So if we're watching this camera, you guys will notice that my bars were wobbling just a little bit. I decreased my stability quite a bit as I had my hands up in the air. So that's always an option. Of course, you can always load it too, but you're gonna need to hang on to it just because of the angle you're at. Another tip here, flex that angle, keep it flexed, okay? Flying muscles, which means that probably more work at the top of the range, okay? You have to work to get that right positioning. Big exhale, squeeze. That's it, 10 seconds. Feels nice. And intense on that ah, Last one. <laughs> Woo! Okay. My gosh, you barely squeak oh. out that last one. All right, nice guys. Hug those legs close. Okay. Figure four. So we did right, left. Now we're going to do the cross body dynamic alternating lat mobility. That's a full mouth. <laughs> totally. 
So we're going to work on the latimus dorsi in the back. We're going to reach that right hand across the body. And remember, we're keeping it dynamic. We're going to keep it moving. I'm going to come all the way up out of that before coming back down. Feel the sensation of trying to pull that arm back. You'll feel that entire back body activate. Okay, so we're coming all the way up. Reach, pull. We're going to try to get that opposite sit bone all the way down to your heel. So we're not hovering it off the ground. Reach, reach, reach. Keep plant it down on the heel. Come all the way back up. This is too hard on your knees. You can always roll up your mat under your knees here. So you guys are going to feel this in the lower back too. Because you're kind of doing a good morning as you have that hip hinge. Make sure you feel that pull in this line. That's the part we're trying to stretch and mobilize. I like that one. I lie, I also like working back. I like working all yeah. body parts. Go all figure. Right. All of them. All right, back and forth bear crawl. So we need a little space. Go over to your side a bit, Timmy. So we're gonna start at that starting line, this back part. We're gonna do a bear crawl. That means moving with that right hand and left foot. And left foot and right hand, two steps, two steps, and then reverse it. So we want to keep our knees hovering off the ground, a couple inches, okay? You want to keep the back of your body nice and flat so it's parallel with the ceiling. Imagine, if you will, that you are balancing maybe a dinner plate on your lower lumbar. So we're not trying to flip flop from side to side. Really controlled inner movement. Ooh. So it takes some brain work to try and that, get that know, coordination between the right and the left. Get in a rhythm, find a groove, five seconds. So you'll feel it in your quads, probably in your hammies and your shoulders. Oh. Ooh, like that. I felt that. I felt All right, that. now we're gonna move it on up. Okay, we're gonna do a squat with the bar overhead. So we've talked about this before with the ball. This is practice for one day when you're gonna do those barbell squats. So nice overhead, sh feet shoulder width apart. So notice the tendency, probably the first one you do, you're gonna to wanna to drop that to the front. You wanna lock those shoulder blades back. So roll them back, pinch them together, and then come down in the squat. Of course, if you don't have that range of motion and you need to decrease the lever length of those arms, go for it. Okay, you can always stand it up as you come out out of that squat until slowly you have that mobility and range of motion to keep it up overhead as we squat. Okay? If you lack that ability, it might be the signs of a shortened posterior chain. And of course, if you just really find it uncomfortable, just get rid of the bar, do the squats. You Last can even one. stabilize them with the bar, like we showed you in those plie squats. All right, we made it to last one. Ending strong with the push-up. So incline push-up, toes are coming back, round shoulder width apart. Really get an idea for how that's sitting on the floor. Drop your chest by drawing those elbows out to the side. You wanna keep a nice flat line. Sometimes when we're in an incline, we tend to like draw our hips back and just bring our head down. It's not what we're doing. Nice long line from the back of the head all the way through your heels. If you need to jam the bar up against a wall or something, feel free to do that if you're worried about the stabilization. And then remember that small tuck under of the pubic bone. Small anterior tilt. Last one, guys, and then we're moving into those 12 minutes. 10 seconds left. So as you pull up, push up, you're gonna wanna draw those hands together to engage the chest. All right. Woo. All right, 12 minute finisher.